Hi, today I'm trying out Elementary OS 6 the beta. This is not a review because it would be unfair to do a review of a beta. This is just a first look, just like all the other videos that I've made, especially because this is my first time trying out Elementary OS. Also, the goal of these videos is not to review any distro, it's actually to make people aware of the many desktop environment and distros and options that we all have as each one of them has their own qualities and effects and it's up to us as users to choose which one we prefer. Let me open up a couple of apps because this is the first thing I want to show you. One to one gestures just like in Gnome and in Jingo S and in the last distro I've tried which is Doran OS meaning that KD Plasma is pretty much the only desktop left without them. I'm feeling a bit stressed uh, right now. I hope that we'll see them in the future. Unluckily, it needs a bit of a rewrite to actually implement them, so we, we might need to wait for at least another bit. But hopefully we'll eventually have them. So we can change workspaces and see the overview, just like in GNOME. And then we can look at the uh, design, which is, you know, my favorite thing. Uh, the design I think is pretty good, especially the top bar, which is completely transparent. I think that if you do transparency, you either do with 100% or using blur. I don't quite like the alternative solution, like in the terminal, as an example, while you have transparency, but without blur. I think you should either go 100% transparency or use blur, because otherwise uh, there's compromises in readability and so on. Then the system tray icons, I think they're beautiful. Like I don't usually look at the system tray icons, but in here, absolutely outstanding. I love them with the little dot for the notification. And one more thing that I've noticed is that the screen corners are actually rounded. Just not much, three or four pixels, but it's noticeable when you're using it. And I think that this is a design trend that I quite like. If you see the latest Android phones the, or iPhone as well, they all have rounded corners and to actually add them with the software to the background, I think they look really good. Then we have this application menu. It's pretty simple. It has a grid or a button to show a list and a search bar. It's very minimalistic, but I like it. And one thing that I was shock to find about is that the meta key is actually mapped to the shortcut window this is very interesting like in my mind meta key is always uh, wired down to the application launcher or overview like in gnome but making it the uh, shortcuts window i think it could make sense so we can see all the shortcuts it has workspaces and to actually launch the application launcher, its meta and space. This could be a good idea from a accessibility point of view because new user could just by pressing the meta button, which is the first thing I do in any desktop, desktop environment, find out about all of the shortcuts. I think it's a good idea. I don't know how good it plays in the long term. Maybe there are some um, option to switch back to the application launcher on Meta, I don't know, but from a first round point of view, it's great. Then there's the dock, which is actually carefully designed. You have the shadow uh, behind it, which is really pretty. And another good thing of the system tray is that if you click on it and then move the mouse between them, the view is switched between them and you will be able to give a look to all of them just by moving the mouse. Great idea. And it's also very smooth, super performant. There's also this good thing that buttons with actual actions have the shortcut uh, near hit. If you open up as an example files, let me fetch it on the top left and then the file button takes a bit to find, just kidding. And I right click, I can see that there's the action near the button so I can actually remember the shortcut or learn it if I don't know it. And also if I right click on the file, I get all of them and it's super useful because otherwise I might just not know about them. Then you have in the notification, the actual, you know, notification that you can 
swipe with two fingers on the trackpad and this is great. I mean, it's not something that will change the way you use your computer, but it's about those little things that make the user experience a bit more natural and nice, pleasant in everyday tasks. We have the battery pop-up with the apps using a lot of power with Simple Screen Recorder and Elementary S. I'm sorry, but I actually need Simple Screen Recorder right now. And then there's the Show Percentage button. I think it would be fit just as nicely in system settings instead of being the first element of the battery pop-up because it's not use, uh, something that the user would usually change like every day. And then you have the volume with the music that's currently playing, which in this case is none. And you also have, which is super important, an option to switch between the speakers. And this is so important to me because my microphone actually believes to be a speaker and I need to switch back to my computer speaker every time. And sometimes I need to go to system settings, find, find the right section and everything. So having just the volume applet is 100% better. One more thing that I really liked before opening up the apps is that after booting up the USB, I got an option to change the keyboard layout. And I actually used Vorjak, meaning that it was super useful to me. I usually have to open up system settings, find the layout section, add uh, Vorjak, find it, and so on. So actually having it just at the beginning, it was super useful. Thank you so much for that. But now that we have the system settings open up, let's actually give a look to the customization that we can bring up. And I see that the first wallpaper is the same as, what was the name again, NixOS or something, the one that uses the MAUI applications. It's a really pretty wallpaper. Uh, I think that it was also used in the previous elementary OS uh, version and then we also have the dragon wallpaper which is the one I'm going to keep because I love the Falcon 9 rocket and then we have another page with the ability to switch to dark and something very curious that I noticed right now is that in the preview you see a application in the left side which is dark which actually switches to light in the right side so it's not a dark mode it's actually a switch color scheme mode where a dark one will become light and a light one will become dark, but I don't actually know which application will become light. Maybe the terminal that I've shown earlier. I don't know. Let me know in the comments, please, so that I can learn out more stuff. But it's actually pretty consistent if you look at the system tray, the application menu, it's all dark, it all uses the same color. It's a dark mode, which is really done well. Then there's the accent color, not as good as Zorin OS, but nobody beats Zorin OS accent color. Then there's the ability to schedule the dark mode. I don't know how I would make this in Plasma. I thought about it, but in Plasma, you don't have light mode and dark mode. You have many light modes, many dark modes, many in between, and you can choose between them. I don't know how the UI would look like. So if you have an idea, please tell me because I'm trying, I'm actually trying to find out I, how I would do this. Then we can switch in the next page. We have the ability to change the icon size in the dock. And something that I really like is that, first of all, they show you how much big the icon is going to be if you click on that button. They don't say like 24, 36, 18. They actually show it how much big is going to be, which is super important. And it's also about not having like a whole slider of possible sizes, just three of them. It's going to make the UI look cleaner. It's going to make testing easier instead of having like lots of options, three good ones that the user can switch between. Then there's the rule to hide the panel. And in this case, I'm sorry, it's called dock here. And in this case is when a window is uh, over it. I think this is the best setting. It's a pity we don't have it in Plasma, maybe somewhere in the future soon. We have pressure reveal, which hides the dock and make it appear if you actually continue dragging down with the mouse after it reached the bottom of the window, makes sense and then an option to actually make the panel opaque, which makes sense because maybe some people don't like the possibility of less contrast with text. Then there's the next section, which is actually off by default. I can 
turn on uh, window corners so maybe i don't know one corner could be the application launcher and if i move my mouse to the top left here it is or i don't know the right one could be um, the overview as an example let's actually try to set it as well and let's take this occasion to see how overview is we can move uh, the window in another desktop it's interesting to see that desktops uh, use the icon of the window as their icon it makes sense so you can see which applications are inside of it and as an example if we open up another application like say the calendar and then get back to the overview it's now an icon with a folder of the window icons and i can drag them around then they update and the best thing is that when you actually drag them around there's this bounce animation which looks amazing i love the bounce animation and then we have this option to actually switch uh, to a new workspace when you maximize a window sounds a bit like mac os and if i try it well i actually forgot to open up a different window otherwise obviously it won't take effect but if i open up music as an example and then maximize this window you can see that it switches to a new one and then back to the old one when i demaximize de it and let me just say that I started this video with this disclaimer, if there are bugs, then don't worry, it's just a beta, but there's none. Where, is, where are the bugs? I want bugs now. Then I just give a look to the other sub pages of system settings. And my opinion is that mostly they are pretty and whoops, I actually closed system settings. Sorry about that. And I think they're mostly pretty, like some are better, like the customization one is, I think, the prettiest, but it's pretty good. It's not like the design is going to be perfect on all uh, sub pages of system settings. That's not the end goal for the user. user. And then by accident, I discovered that I can right click on the help bar and I get lots of interesting options. But the coolest thing is that there's a tick screenshot button which is super cool. I mean, it makes total sense. Like now that I've seen it, I know that it makes total sense, but I would never thought of it. Super useful way to take quickly screenshots. And one final thing about the overview is that the background is very good. Like I think I prefer it over the GNOME one. It has this shadow and gray with a bit of noise background, super nice. And the good design doesn't stop there. The application are also very good, but for this video, I think I will not go through every single application that be a bit unfair to the beta status. I'll actually end my video by testing a bit out the task app just because I love task apps. And I'll say that I really liked Elementor OS. I think it's really promising, especially in those little things that actually make or kill the user experience in Elementor OS. They make it totally. And I can't wait to see the final release to actually test it out like an in-depth actual review because I really loved the beta. It's totally my favorite distro so far that I've tested. Of course, my in my heart, Plasma is still the favorite, but I love Elementor OS as well.